Hello and welcome to the Art Life video blog. It's day 134 and I'm Daniel Gill. I'm Ray. I'm Jacob Wolf. Thank you, Dan, for having me here today. Thank you for having me here. So, uh, do you want to tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I used to be a graphic artist. I started in advertising in 1983, a long time ago. And uh, from there I was a freelancer for about 20 years and uh, taught at PNCA and a couple of other places and taught my time. And I've gone into um, being a fine artist and uh, making this wonderful stuff here, which is uh, called um, monotypes, basically. So this is using a person, a brain, She's up here, actually. It's probably out of the camera shot. But <laughs> using a person to make a monotype. So I'm actually working with the body of the model and paint to make this impression. And then coming back into it and, and painting on top of that. Instead of doing a traditional portrait where you're looking at somebody and then translating them into something, again, off camera like this over here, um, it's actually working directly with the model as an object to create these things. So that's what I'm doing these days. How long have you been doing this? This is about a five-year project right here. It's been going on since I started it in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Before I was doing this, I was working um, with balloons. So basically, I'm making the same ones with balloons. But I'm doing with people, and it was uh, really interesting and strange, but I wanted to push the envelope just a little bit and see if I could do it with people. Right. And when you work with people, it's a little bit different because you don't have any control over the person like you do the balloon. So it basically takes on a life of its own. So it's a collaboration between two people rather than just me. And I like that because it's, um, it's something outside of myself. And uh, I'm really enjoying doing it. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting them all finished and having them ready for a show. So, Very cool. Yeah. So uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, where did your artistic journey begin? Uh, when I was a kid, I was drawing off of a TV screen watching Monitor or Manitor or something like that, some very old caveman cartoon, and that's where it started. And then I started copying comic books when I was um, probably about 10 or 12 years old. And from there, I went to art school to learn how to be an advertising guy. So I put that stuff aside for about 20 years to pursue the career in advertising. Was that still artistic for you? Yeah, I was um, basically I started out as an art director, so I was putting together ads and things like that. But I got into when I, I worked for Turner Broadcasting, but I left them to go freelancing. And when I did, um, I worked with a bunch of people who knew I could draw out of my head. So I started doing things called, things called comps, so working with markers and drawing the ads and the things that went into storyboards right there on the spot for people. So it was a really fast paced and very uh, high energy kind of thing. And, uh, let me make my own hours and things like that. I got a lot of chance to draw. Very cool. So yeah, very much enjoyed that. But um, advertising can burn you out. It's a very fast thing. People call you up overnight and want something the next day quite a bit. And uh, after you know, a couple of decades of that, I just wanted to do my own stuff. So this is, this is what I'm doing now. So, so you stuff. made a switch to fine art. Yeah, I made it slowly to fine art from the. Uh, the graphic stuff, I still did the graphic stuff when I need some money, so I can go back and do that. The computer is great for that because as I get older, my eyesight fails me quite a bit. I'm getting pretty thick. But uh, <laughs> when I get onto the computer, I can go up as we can really do it and still see it. Make your eyes look really pretty, though. Yeah, they do. <laughs> it makes me look like a cartoon, which is kind of funny, which I just really see. So, it's kind of so um, what was your uh, kind of style with the graphic? It was more um, realistic and onto the cartoony side. Let's see if I can find a piece of recording real quick. Just hang on right here and I'll walk off camera. Alright, we're gonna. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. 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 entertain just a little bit. So, Rain, what's your experience doing all this kind of stuff? Um, I really enjoy doing it. Yeah. I like the She grew up kind of like hippie, like she would lay out a piece of paper and just let me scribble and paint on it, or me my diaper, or whatever. <laughs> just, uh, and she does stuff where she does boards and she uses saran wraps, or like saran wrap, and she pushes the paint around, and she pulls it off, and she leaves the saran wrap on there for a little bit and let it dry to get texture. And I've made a couple of boards, but I never know what to do. Alright, this is cool. She like put stuff on there and like takes cool pictures. But um How long have you 
long have you been working with Dan? I, this is my third time working with him. Um, yeah, you're relatively new. We did uh, painting or two paintings together, and then he did that one up there, and I did some naval castings with him, um, which are really cool. I brought those home. What, uh, what do you want to do with the naval castings? The naval castings, I'm in school right now, getting that degree, and uh, I'm taking some sculpture classes, so I needed to do something in the sculpture classes when I was working with these naval's. So I put them together in this kiosk over here, I could bring it down here for you. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it, uh, it's basically a little study on the umbilical cord. Connection is your neighbor. So I said it's fairly heavy right here, so I set it down here and you can see it. But it's um, <clears throat> it's a whole bunch of acrylic with these castings of navels put into it. And it's kind of not made the transition from school very well. So these little pieces of acrylic were supposed to connect you to this one cord right here, which is an inferior mother, so that's what I was doing with the naval castings. I'm really enjoying the sculpture at school, so it, uh, it's a nice little way to translate what I'm doing anyway to over to something. Yeah, it's a little bit different. So, back to your uh, graphic arts. Yeah, this is the stuff I used to do as graphic arts. This is from a children's book called Why Am I Me? And it's actually just a little tiny sketch in a sketchbook, so it's done with markers and colors. Wow. This piece right here, I can take the book over and show if you want to. This is uh, just basically, I used to do a lot of spot illustration, and I'm not really sure what this was actually for, but it's a spot illustration that was done inside a computer. These are a client of mine, and I really enjoy working with them. It's a children's theater company out down in Oregon City, and it's called uh, Crayon Kids. So every year I do a poster for them, and it's a different play that they put on. So they'll send me a script to it and an idea of what they're actually wanting to do, and I'll do everything on here, the logos and the uh, titles and everything. So that's a lot of fun. This is for a uh, coffee company, Red Fox Java, so a lot of logo work. This is for a friend of mine's studio. It's called Spot Genie. It's basically you load up your, uh, they load up the spots that they do the commercials so that the client can download them. It's in the radio stations in one place, and they can track everything. This is done for the Hollywood Theater locally. It's for the Illustrator's Jam, which was something I started with a couple of friends of mine. And it's uh, something we did in connection with PNCA for the students. We get together and give ourselves an assignment, and the students will get it as well, so they get to work with real illustrators in the profession right there on, on site, so that's a lot of fun. The stuff here is some old scratch board stuff. Um, it's just a little thing to make. Some more stuff from the children's book. So basically, it was a lot of drawing of very uh, whimsical uh, kind of commercial stuff. When did you do the children's book? The children's book was actually done um, it was quite a while ago, actually. 1998, I believe. So it was uh, quite a bit. And uh, these are some little things I did for the Chinese calendar. And they go on and on. This was done for a uh, theater down in Corpus Christi, Texas, called the Ritz. Grand reopening. It had uh, gotten quite dilapidated when they rebuilt it. And this was for the poster of that. So they made all the And these are just various and sundry things in here. This was also done for another children's book called The Secret of Christmas Tree Ornaments, which was a local fellow here who uh, has since moved on, but it was, uh, these were metal ornaments cast metal instead of glass so they wouldn't break. So, uh, yeah, so these are just extra things like that, but you get the gist of what kind of stuff I used to do. When did you decide that you wanted to make the switch to fine art? It was, um, there was a really big crash in 2008, if you remember that, the and um, I just wanted to get out from underneath all the uh, stuff and the clients that working with because I was giving the clients a program. So I cut everything back to a really manageable size. And it gave me a lot of time to actually sit down and paint. 
I'm saying? I always wanted to be, I'd always wanted to be a painter or something. You know? Pushing some of the clients aside and just keeping the ones that I really, really liked. You know, just buying some paints and going through the paints. It started out realistically. We have a really nice tree here. Let's <laughs> just say it alone. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of it started out like Grayson's portrait of there, which uh, was really just rough and kind of, you know, unsettling. And then it got to the smoother stuff like this. So I found that the more um, I really like working with the figure, the, the more I get away from the actual re representation of the figure, the more engaging the paintings become. So they don't frighten people as much as they like the colors. So, and I do. So you uh, do the the, the, uh, the paintings with the girls, and then you paint over the top of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah um, I wish I could show you. I've actually I'm putting together a video of it, but basically what happens is what you see on these nipples of Venus prints over here. So if you uh, look at these, these are basically the raw monotype that comes off. And then I take that and put some sort of narrative with it, which is this one here it has a lot of snake. Yeah, I fully realized right that this is I see this is some sort of ringleader or ringmaster of the circus and these snails are flying through it. So it, uh, it develops a story as it gets painted. Part of the big thing about it is painting out pieces of it. This one over here started out on my background just like this, but the darks are added. There's a lot of tiny color pencil works in there that make it more mysterious and more strange. And what you see here is actually the model, which is kind of fun. So you get, it's a strange thing about the person, muscle and bone affect the thing differently. The more bone is close to the surface, pushes the thing away, and the muscle will hold the thing. So it's a fascinating kind of thing to stare at. It's, uh, it's almost like a, an old psychedelic poster. So, how do people get a hold of you to find your work? Are you showing in galleries? No, not yet. I've been putting together a big show, but if, uh, you can see my work on my website, which is DanielLeahMill.com. And you can also see these monotypes of the nipples on nipplesofvenus.com. So that's a new project that I'm working with. It, uh, is a little, it makes uh, the paintings more affordable so people can get a small. Mm -hmm. These would be pretty much, you know, they take up your whole wall. Yeah. Look at this one. So. Having something small is, is a nice thing. Um, what was I going to say? <coughs> oh, are you always looking for new models or are you pretty set with the girls that you have? You know, I'm pretty set with the ladies that I work with already, but um, you know, if someone comes along that really wants to work with me on this, I'll consider it for sure. But, uh, I've worked with a lot of people over the past five years, and I find the ones that I come back to are the ones that are have given something to the paintings of themselves. And, uh, I haven't worked with anybody, save, save for one person, who's been uncomfortable with it. Most people love it. And the deal that I work at with everybody is you get a painting for doing it, but I'd say only about 10% of the people come back and actually get the painting, which is pretty funny, because I guess most people just need the experience. But um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm open to working with new people. You know, if they really want to do it. Right so, on. Yeah. Um, what are your goals and aspirations for the future? I want to put this together. There's probably um, about 100 pieces in this piece, in this show. So I want to assemble this and put it together in a show called Maps and get that out to a gallery. I was looking at a place called Butters, but they just moved out of the old space. And it's something that I haven't seen yet, but I'd love to talk to them about it because they actually do uh, book shows that develop like this one. So I'd like to get that set up and, and out there so people can see it. And then I'd like to uh, keep pursuing this Nipples of Venus project because I'm really enjoying that. And that's a very fast uh, way to work, unless we compile a whole bunch of different pieces of art and experiment with. Uh, Putting it up on the web on an online store and everything like that. So that's really fun, a new thing to do. And it lets me play around with editing other videos as well, which uh, is a brand new thing too. So uh, very, very exciting. So the, uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a gallery that I throw. 
Um, it's called Fourth F and Friday. Yeah. And it's on the fourth fourth Friday of the month. Uh, the next one coming up is on August 28th. Uh, you're more than welcome to come check it out, see what the feel is. Uh, there's a ton of artists that are going to be there. Uh, live music, uh, provide free booze and food for everybody, and we paint on the walls. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Uh, so that's August 28th, and then all of the artists that I interviewed this month are invited to next month's show, September 25th. Yeah. And welcome to bring art to show that. Yeah, I would love to. There's a couple of these pieces that I have framed that I would love to right on. and show. Yeah. And then uh, at the end of the night, and this isn't a requirement or anything, um, but I ask all of the artists if there's something small that they wouldn't mind donating yeah. uh, towards a raffle. And any of the guests that come in, if they donate $5 or more towards the art, like we do a vlog, or, uh, or, and 4th up and Friday, they get a raffle ticket. And then at the end of the night, we raffle all of the art from all the artists that are working. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff here. So if you just want to pick something, well, there you go. Just, yeah. Right on. Get through and get to her. So yeah, so, you. thank you. Yeah. Do you, either of you have any last comments, questions, or concerns? No, thank you very much for, you know, taking the time to come over. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Thank you. Art Life Video Blog, everybody, day 134. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, catch you again soon. All right.